Yeah, I'm Terry Kramer, and I worked uh, for the last 25 years in the telecom, mobile, and tech industries. 18 of those 25 years were at Vodafone. So I had a chance to move eight times in 18 years in a variety of roles. Uh, the most recent roles I had at Vodafone was Group Strategy Officer and also Regional President of the Americas. Since leaving Vodafone several years ago, I worked for the U.S. State Department. I negotiated a telecom and internet treaty, which was all about internet access globally. And then most recently, I teach at the business school at UCLA, and I teach technology management and a course on the mobile industry and how it's grown and the innovation that's happening. So I think there's a lot of exciting things and also things to be on the lookout for in terms of the future going into 2020 and beyond. Number one, the Internet of Things broadly. You know, the opportunity to connect homes and cars, our devices, we're probably at less than 1% of all devices that can be connected are connected. The information that would come out of that uh, connected world would significantly make our lives easier would provide information that could predict certain events and can lower costs. So a lot of great things on uh, the whole Internet of Things at world. The second thing and related to that is all of the data that's going to get created from these connections. Knowing where people drive and how they drive and what's going on with their bodies, knowing the type of research that's gone on. You think of IBM Watson and what they're doing with healthcare and creating all of this information about research trials and being able to predict people's future medical state. There's a whole bunch of information that's getting created by this connectedness. Now, I think the challenge is making sense out of all that information. You know, you can have information overload and consumers will immediately say, I don't want all this. But if we can create relevance, relevance in terms of recommendations for people, relevance in terms of predicting what can happen, not just this is your current health state, but this is what's likely to happen to you in the future. All of those things are really powerful, but we've got to have great minds on figuring out what all this information means and providing relevance to the end user. The last trend that I'll just talk about is just the idea of video. That more and more things are shifting from way back, just kind of voice communications, to accessing the internet and getting data, to now video. Being able to see somebody live when you talk to them, being able to get your content in a video form, all of that video explosion which creates a huge demand on networks, but also creates a more engaging user experience. Yeah, so there's several challenges. At the base level, it's almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The networks need to be robust enough. They need to be mobile enough so that all these great things can happen. So the crush of data that's coming over in the form of video, the amount of spectrum that's going to be needed for all these connected devices, if the networks don't keep up with the demand, you have a bad user experience. And all the things that we talk about end up being talk and not reality. I remember being at Vodafone thinking, you know, we're building 3G networks. This was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Thinking, well, what are people going to need all this network capacity for? We're spending all this money. What are they going to use? Well, was I ever wrong? And the demand has always outpaced the, the availability and the supply. So making sure the networks are available and making sure they're mobile. Because the other thing that consumers have said is, listen, I will be comfortable not being in my home or being in my office if you can provide a great experience on the go. But the networks have got to have seamlessness, it's got to be fast everywhere, et cetera. So that's kind of one base level of kind of requirement that's out there. The second one, as I mentioned, is making sense of the data and information and using it wisely. So we've got to make sure that, you know, there's insights. You know, when I teach at UCLA, one of the things I tell my students is, what is the so what? We all get exposed to lots of data, but why is it relevant to me? Does it suggest I should go do something? Should I invest? Should I create a new product? But what is the so what out of it? That's the ultimate imperative about all this data that's getting created. Related to that is making sure there's a respect for privacy. And there's a dynamic tension, I think, between privacy and relevance. 
So if you look at Google Maps, you know, a lot of people initially say, well, I, I don't want my information shared. But you look at Google Maps and you're giving all your location information away. But the relevance of the offer, the power of the offer is so good that people are saying, I'm willing to give you that information because I'm, I'm benefiting from it. The same may happen in healthcare. That people may not want to share healthcare initially, but if you can provide a better predictive capability about treatments with better success rate, people might be willing to do it. We've got to be cognizant of that balance of privacy against relevance and always protecting privacy, but hoping that we get better relevance that's, uh, that's out there. Um, the final thing I just mentioned, it's getting into more public policy issues, is there's got to be a public policy environment that supports access to the internet broadly. One of the things that I did at the State Department was help advocate the need for a free and open internet. For good or for bad, internet access is being curtailed in many countries to this day, and increasingly so, because of worry about political unrest. Um, left to its own devices, that lack of internet access will create its own ills because there won't be the economic growth, there won't be the connectedness that needs to happen for society to advance. Yeah, well, so I, first of all, I think your question really represented the issue and the challenge is there is an ecosystem that has to come together to provide these services. So when I was at Vodafone, and originally it was AirTouch and Pactel in California, you know, the mobile operators could operate pretty much on their own in a vertical siloed environment. They ran networks and, you know, set up call centers and the services were provided voice and, da and data on their own. More and more as the internet came into the equation, you can't do those things alone. And you have to partner, not customer supplier, but partner with other players that can provide great applications, great information, robust networks. It allows each of those players in turn to be specialized in their areas. So the ecosystem is a very, very important part of this stuff happening. And so having you know, a Congress like this allows people to come together, think about where that common vision is. What does that world beyond 2020 look like? What are the requirements that exist? And how do we all kind of work together to create that environment? That to me is why this is so important. And with all of that, what are the latest trends? It's so hard to kind of keep up with all the changes. This is a great place for people to know what's happening when.